Welcome to the Live Your Spa Life show. I am so excited to have our special guest here, Craig Deswalt. We are going to have an awesome, awesome conversation here together. You guys are going to want to tune into this because not only is he a speaker, author, podcaster, he is also the creator of Rockstar Marketing. Welcome, Craig. Well, hello, Diane. How are you? <laughs> it seems like I just saw you yesterday. <laughs> we did, kind of. Just, right? We saw uh, a lot of each other. I think we were stalking each other. Is what I, was think, I think it was a mutual stalking that was yeah. happening at, at Dallas at the eWomen Conference. And yeah. it was so fun to hang out with you and your beautiful wife, Natasha, and your mm -hmm. son. And it was so fun to be at the Queen concert where it was your son's first concert. First concert ever, and I'm a huge Queen fan. So I said to myself, I want to take him, I, I want his first concert to be Queen. But it was, you know, it was hard to happen in LA because it's just, just hard because I'm working. Right. So I'm in Dallas, and then that day we realized they're in town. Right. We, we get tickets, and we're sitting like two rows from you, you know, which was <laughs> weird. Yeah, it was uh, an amazing concert, amazing. So fun. It was so great to have that experience. And so, you know, we're going to have some of, of our, um, our listeners and our people who are going to catch us here on Facebook. And uh, they're also going to be here, you know, internationally to hear on the podcast. So for those of you, you know, you're really going to want to tune into this because Craig has a very interesting background. In fact, let's just say a rock and roll background, and you're going to want to hear more about that. So we want to know where you guys are tuning in from, like what city, state, country, or your friend, put in the comments. You're going to want to share this because for any of you that have that rock and roll dream and see about how that can infect you, you're going to want to tune into the conversation that Craig and I are going to have. I'm just going to touch a little bit on his background so that you can kind of just see what I'm talking about. So he toured with Guns N' Roses and was the personal assistant for Axl Rose, and he was also the band's personal assistant for Air Supply. So I got a lot of friends and I know you do too, that just love the whole rock and roll experience and want to have that behind the scenes kind of glimpse of what that life was like. So Craig, how did you get into this rock and roll world? Totally luck, mistake, being at the right place at the right time. But also I do this in my, um, when I talk about marketing, always do your best just in case someone's watching. So I was working at a theater in Long Island, New York, two weeks out of um, college because I wanted to be an actor. So I'm working there for two weeks and uh, Air Supply comes in and does a show on a Friday and Saturday night. Friday night I work the show and I'm running backstage, I'm getting them towels, I'm getting them drinks, I'm the gopher, you know, the lowest man on the totem pole, but I just started working there. And then the second night I'm not scheduled to work, but my mother wants to go see Air Supply. So she takes me, uh, no, I take her to the concert uh, at Westbury and then, uh, to make a long story short, we go backstage after the concert and they ask me if I want to go on the road because they like my positive attitude and my energy and I leave tomorrow. And so they sent a limo to my house, Learjet, to Wallingford, Connecticut and toured with Air Supply for seven years just because I was always doing my best just in case someone was watching. So it was right place at the right time, but, you know, not, you know, doing really well at what I was doing and they saw that and they took me away. Uh, you know, I, I really love that about just kind of living your life because you never know who is going to be watching yeah. and, you know, showing up as your best self always because you never know who's going to be noticing what, what that looks like. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that is so fun. And, and I definitely get that about your energy. I loved every time we ran into each other, you know, you always had these great stories and fun things to connect and you just, you had your family with you too. So I love, do you have your family with you typically when you're on the road or was every, everywhere I go? I mean, if I'm speaking at a small little conference for, I don't know, an hour and I'm in and out of town, then I won't. But this, we made it a trip because I was speaking twice. I spoke at eWomen and then one of my mastermind members had a, um, um, a conference uh, that Monday. So we made it a trip and we're also looking at colleges for my older son. So we made it a big deal, but we always, my wife and I always, we never take vacations alone, which some of the people might go, wait, you don't have enough time for yourselves. And trust me, we have enough time for ourselves. We, <laughs> we see each other, we work in the same office. So right. we see each other all the time and we are just big into taking our kids everywhere. We want them to experience the entrepreneurial life so that they grow up to maybe want to own their own businesses. They I love 
I love that so much because, you know, when we talk about spa life, you know, that's a lifestyle, you know, yeah. and lifestyle where you've got accomplishment and harmony together. Mm -hmm. And I love how you've blended those things together. In fact, one of the things I definitely want to talk about with our audience is that so many people live a life of default. They just kind of let it happen to them and the day just kind of blend into each other. And, you know, when you're living your spa life, you're living a life of design. It's very purposeful and you're really creating the life that you want to live. So I'd love to hear, you know, Craig, what are some of the things that you're doing to allow, um, you know, how you're consciously creating that to have your spa life? Yeah, I, uh, that's a great, I love the spa life thing, by the way. That's just, that's, my wife especially loves that. <laughs> loves oh, spa. Natasha and I have talked. Yes, you, you have, which is going to cost us a lot of money. I know. <laughs> but she does, she, uh, you know, she doesn't go camping. She goes glamping at the Four Seasons, that type of thing, you know, always at a spa place. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not perfect at this, but because uh, my wife and I work like crazy, we do. But we try, it, it's all about um, organization for us. I schedule a lot of stuff, even though I'm very spontaneous and can do things off the cuff. I, 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 I have room for that. And I always tell people, you can be tied with me as far as being busy, you can be tied. No one's busier than me, it's impossible, because you'd be dead. <laughs> Because, you know, but you could be tied. I mean, we all work hard and, and yet I, I do, I do to-do lists. I'm big on to-do lists. I, I have it right over here, right over there is my to-do list. Nice. And I love checking things off, you know, my to-do list. And so I give myself in the morning, we have a routine when we drop the kids off to school, we go to the gym, we come home from the gym, we shower, then we get ready and I answer emails for two hours. And then I do my coaching calls and then I have free time. At, uh, and then the kids come home from school. We spend time with the kids. And then after that, after dinner, uh, the kids are doing homework and I'm now in creative mode because I'm very good late at night. So I go into creative mode from like nine o'clock at night till unfortunately one in the morning. And then I wake up at six o'clock again and do it again. So I'm one of these people that needs five hours sleep and, uh, and I could be good for the day. And I don't drink coffee, which is amazing. But um, it's all about scheduling, organization, time management skills that I'm really, really great at. And I just, you know, I, I'm pretty, pretty set in that way. But, you know, I get a lot of curveballs with kid things and golf. We have three golfers in our family and a lot of sports. So I do get curveballs. So I allow for that. And I know that's going to happen. But I don't watch TV. I don't go out and go to bars and drink, you know, and we, we've, cut those things out of our lives. And we made a choice that it's all about family and work. I love that, that you've designed your life in a way, because, you know, there's so many different options and things that we could be doing and having that conscious choice. And the thing I think is really important for our, our listeners to, to really uh, hear here is that you can actually be spontaneous within structure. Mm -hmm. That Actually, when you create structure, you can actually be more spontaneous because you've allowed the time. I love how you said you've got free time. You know when you're creative, so you can kind of step in and, and do those aspects as well. But when you actually have the structure, you get in the habits that have you do that, then it allows you to be the most spontaneous mm -hmm. to, to make that happen. So, and I love how you've just really blended together all the different things that, that you're, you're up to. So, yeah. um, you know, a lot of people may not know that you're actually an award-winning copywriter and mm -hmm. that you have, you know, worked as a creative director for the Los Angeles-based ad agency and that you opened up your own ad agency, Green Room Design and Advertising. And so I love how you took your music world and you took your, your copywriting, creative marketing world, and you've blended music and marketing together. Mm -hmm. And that's how you stepped into rock star um, events. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So I, um, you know, I did the truth. I, I have a marketing degree from college, got a job um, with air supply. So I put that on hold for a little while and I saw what air supply did to attract, you know, 15 to 20,000 fans to the concert. Then I was sick of touring. So I opened up my own advertising agency. I actually worked for an ad agency for a little while. Then I went to a Tony Robbins seminar and he brainwashed me to become an entrepreneur. So that, <laughs> I love Tony. <laughs> I know, me too. And, um, and then I quit that job and I opened my own ad agency because I'm like, I do all the work already at the ad agency that I work for. I do everything. I do the meetings. I do the graphic design. I do the creative. I did everything. And I'm like, but they got the check. And I'm like, wait, this is wrong. So that's when I opened up Green Room Design, got a bunch of clients, and it was going great for a very long time. And then I got the phone call to go to bed with Guns N' Roses. 
So then I did that. And then after that, I said, you know what, it's time to uh, step it up. And I, I went to a speaking seminar once and I learned you actually get paid to be a speaker and uh, just everything just uh, came from uh, going on the road with these bands and then uh, realizing and having confidence in myself that I could do this myself. But about the bands, Guns N' Roses was a master at marketing. They were masters at marketing. And they had attracted 80,000 people to come to a show every city that we were in. So I'm not going to share those now because they're like weird stories, but there's <laughs> ways that you can, not having the weirdness, attract a lot of people. I learned how do you attract fans? How do you build communities? And, and that's what they were really good at, Guns N' Roses. You would think, you know, they're just party animals, but they're actually great businessmen and they're very, very disciplined. So I learned all those things and now I just teach regular people like you and I how to become rock stars in our business simply by standing out from the competition and doing things a little different, well, actually a lot different than everybody else. All right. Well, I definitely want to touch a little bit more on this because, you know, uh, you know, obviously, you know, Guns and Roses is like, you know, this, I mean, everybody knows the name, you know, this, this, you know, sustainable over time and to be the personal assistant to Axl Rose. I mean, he's quite a personality. What was that like uh, for one and two, what were some of the things that you gleaned from him that you still use today? Uh, first of all, uh, the interesting thing about Axl Rose is everyone thinks he's the bad boy of rock and roll because that's what they want you to believe, that they're the bad boys of rock and roll and they're going to do things all wrong and stuff. But what people, and, and in the media, that's how he's portrayed as the bad boy of rock and roll. But the interesting thing about Axl is every Halloween, this is just one example, every Halloween he has a, um, uh, a party at his house for underprivileged children. And he wow. buses them in, they all come to his house, like 300 kids, and he gives out candy and he gives out prizes and, and treats. And he has this thing called a Halloween tree, like a Christmas tree. Right. He has a Halloween tree and he decorates it and he puts gifts under the tree and he gives all these kids like iPads and skateboards and these major things. So that will never be in the news because that doesn't coincide with who Axl Rose is. You know, they're never right. going to write that. So that's, that's who he really is. But... You know, I don't know if he designs it where I can't tell people about that because I'm the bad boy. Right. Or it just, the media just doesn't want to portray that. But the other thing about Axel is he's great one-on-one. -on -one. He's a very caring, loving person. He loves my wife. Uh, he loves me, I think. You know, I, I don't know <laughs> love, but we're very good friends. And uh, yet, uh, in public, he's a little bit different. He's, like, not comfortable in public. And he does some things that you and I would go, ooh, I don't know. But he's a rock star, so he gets away with it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, that's interesting. And I love how you glean some of these things and you're able to see what are some of the things that work is that, you know, who we're showing up in the world may not be all of who we are. Right. And how we utilize those things. I mean, I would never even think of Axl Rose as being, you know, somewhat shy or, you know, not be able to uh, connect with, with people in the world. Yeah, he's very shy. He's yeah. extremely shy. Uh, he has, a, now, no one knows this for a fact, so this is just Craig observing this. Okay. But he, you know, he has this reputation of being late, you know, to concerts all the time, and he's getting better now. But um, I think it's that he has to get up the the not the courage, but that he's such a quiet man, and he has to get to that level where he can go on stage and reach eighty thousand people and reach that last person in the last row with right. this enormous voice and powerful yeah. uh, stage presence. And he right. has to work up to that. He can't just turn from this quiet, shy guy to what the world perceives as Axel Rose. So there's a process. And right. I think it just takes long sometimes for him to go through that process. People don't get that. Well, I appreciate you saying that because when I saw Guns N' Roses, he did show up late on stage. Yeah. And it's so funny. I almost cannot even think about like, you know, when I think of him, I just think of that sway that he yeah. has, right? Yeah. The whole Paradise City. <laughs> and, you know, you think about, you know, the energy that it takes to be in the presence of 80,000 people who have an, an expectation of how you're going right. to show up and, and be in that way. I mean, 
I so admire people who, you know, stand into their craft and go through the uncomfortableness. I mean, you know, we were talking about this with Sandra Yanti at, at the event about how people can sometimes stay in their comfort zone versus getting into that unknown zone to do the bigger, greater things that were here. Right. To do. So I appreciate that in him. And I love the fact that you've harnessed that energy and the things that you are, are bringing to Rockstar Marketing to utilize those principles to help, you know, the, the average entrepreneur to really step into that greatness. Yeah. And I learned from, you know, I'm a huge queen fan, as you now know, <laughs> and, yeah. and um, I'm a huge Freddie Mercury fan, huge. And yes. uh, Brian May um, opened up for Guns N' Roses for about a year on the Guns N' Roses tour that I was on. So I got to be really good friends with Brian May and he's such a sweetheart. So I, I actually learned, you know, I, I took improv classes because I was an actor. And that's why I think I'm really good on stage that I can just turn on a dime on if someone, if something happens, I can go with it. Right. But I also learned from like a Freddie Mercury and an Axl Rose and Russell Hitchcock from Air Supply. How do you, as the front man, you know, get to all the people, like 80,000 people, you know how hard that is? But I learned that there are certain things and it's all about high energy. You know, there's so many speakers and people that just speak and there's no passion in there. And I just look right. at that going, how do you do this every day? I, I, would, <laughs> I wouldn't want to do that every day. So right. go out there and, and this is a great lesson. Whatever you do in life, you just have to, you better have a passion for it. Otherwise, A, we'll find out that you don't and we right. won't go with you or B, no one's going to resonate with you because when, if you're not passionate about it, why would we? Right. How do they get involved with that? Okay. So, so that just, that just spurred something for me. So I love this, this sentence, you know, I'd love for you to complete this. I unapologetically choose to. Uh, I unapologetically choose to live my life to the fullest and not care what people think. <laughs> you totally embody that. I love that about <laughs> that. You yeah. know, and, and I'm, I'm not great at that. that. I, I, I'm really good at it, but I'm not perfect because, you know, my, my skin isn't as thick as Axel Rose's and it's getting <laughs> thicker, but uh, I haven't had the problems that he's had. So <laughs> I'm good. I'm okay. I, I, I totally get that. So, you know, I, I would love for even our, our, you know, people who are listening here on, on, on Facebook and, and also on the line there is if you are on the Facebook, put in the comments below, like, what are you unapologetically choosing to do in this world? We would love to hear it. Craig and I are going to come back here and look at this. You know, I, I, you probably have some marketing things and you really want to know what Craig's up to. For those of you that may be able not to stay throughout the whole thing with us, you're going to want to connect here and you can do that uh, with craigdoeswalt.com. And I'm going to spell that for you, especially if you guys are listening and driving, just so that you can do that. And it's um, C-R-A-I-G-D-U-S-W-A-L-T.com. He has so many amazing like tools and tricks to be able to utilize the energy of the rock star world and put it into your own marketing. So you're definitely going to want to check that out. And we're going to continue the conversation around spa life and how he's doing that in balance. And if a lot of you are asking yourself, well, what the heck is spa life? Um, I also want to throw out there my free gift for you guys to look at, which is at dianehalfman.com forward slash guide. So you can look at how are you balancing out all these different options and things that we want to do. I mean, there's so many things that we could be doing in our life and how are you bringing more of that balance and things into your life? So you guys want to stay tuned here because I know that Craig has some amazing tips and things. So let's just jump back in with that, Craig. So what are some of the things where people are like, you know, I've been doing some traditional marketing and it's going okay, but how are you actually bringing the rock and roll energy into like, what are some just like ninja rock and roll things that you're doing that really shift things for people in their marketing? Yeah. I, you know, um, I have, I have 254 of them. And every time <laughs> someone asks me that question, I'm like, Ooh, which ones do I pick? You know? Right. Right. And just seven books, right? Yeah, eight books now. And, I've oh. eight. Um, and uh, okay, let's just talk about books. I always tell people that they should write a book. Everyone needs to write a book. And I just did this thing at E-Women where your book should be your business. Your business card should be a book. And uh, I was, I did it again where I share a book that you can write is a quote book. You could just go, like I'm a marketing guy. So I would go on Google and look up marketing quotes and I would choose my 50 favorite marketing quotes. And I would put them in a book and put them on a Microsoft Word document and give credit to the person that uh, sent the quote. And I would put it in the book and I would call the book, 
Craig Doeswald's top 50 marketing tips. Well, interesting thing happened at eWomen. Um, so many people came up to me and said, I'm doing that tonight. I'm doing that tonight. Every time I talk about this, what I feel is a silly little thing, and, and I think it's obvious, and I think everyone has done it already. No one has done it, and, and people are blown away by the idea. And I personally think it's the simplest thing that I talk about. But anyway, uh, and there was one girl at eWomen that heard, us on a call, heard me on a call before the conference, and she actually did it in 12 hours. She got the uh, quotes, she had it laid out, and she actually had it printed by 48hourbooks.com. So in three days, she actually had the book in her hands, which is amazing. Right. And I brought her on stage at eWomen because that's, that's what's possible. But at the same time, I heard somebody, because I, I had at eWomen, I think I had like 35 people there from my conferences or my mastermind. And one person was at dinner with this person that was bashing me because she said, oh, don't listen to Craig because that's not the way to write a book. We do real books. <laughs> and, I, and I look at that going, she missed the point of that. I get it. We all should write a real book. Right. I have a book called Rockstar System for Success, which has tips in it. This is just a business card thing that instead of handing a business card, you're gonna have your picture on it and your name on the front cover and it's a small book. And yeah, it's not your life story and it's not the end all book, but it's something that you can give to somebody instead of a business card and stand out from the competition. So I look at that and I hear that and I'm going, oh my gosh, some people just missed the point. I have more, but you, you want to say something right now. I feel, it. I feel it. No, 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 it's okay. I, you know, one of the things I, I love about this is that distinction because, you know, there are definitely like our life story and our, and our, you know, biography and those kind of things. But what's great about using, you know, these smaller books as not only a business card, but it's also a way for people because people want to have, you know, what are some of the insights? I mean, there are things where like, I'd love to know as you as being this, you know, marketing person that has so many insights over the years, like what are some of your favorite things? You know, like this is another way for people to get to know us. Right. And these are just little snippets of our life that we can actually put together so they can get to know who we are because who do we do business with? People that we know, trust, love, like, all these things. Yeah. You know, when we know more about them, then and it just it says so much more about them than just a business card. Yeah, I agree. Um, and thank you for saying that because we're on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, we love each other. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So uh, a couple of more. Um, so I don't uh, hand out, um, I don't do postcards. I don't do postcards or brochures for direct mail. So what I do for direct mail is I send, and, and once again, this is just a way, because I hate cold calling, but I want to get in touch with some people sometime, sometimes, and I don't want to send them the typical postcard or brochure. So I send, I get a number 10 business envelope, a white envelope. And I put, the, <laughs> I put their address on the back and in the return address, I put my return address and my telephone number. And I send this person that I want to talk to an empty envelope. And what happens is they open the envelope and they realize it's empty. And 90% of the time they call me because my telephone number is in the return address. And they call me and say, hey, Craig, my name is John Smith. And I just got an empty envelope from you. And I'm just curious what was in it. Did you forget to put it in it? I said, no, actually, I just wanted to talk to you and hi, you know, and just introduce myself. <laughs> and one of two things happens. One, which very rarely happens, they get mad at me that that was a really cheesy thing to do. And I'm like, dude, you're the one who called me. I didn't call you, you know. <laughs> or number two is they go, wow, that's really clever. So what do you do? And I say, I teach rock star marketing. And these are the things that we do to stand out from everybody else that's sending out our, our postcards and things. So I do that. And... 99% of the time, I get a great response from it. So I do a lot of stuff like that. I mean, it's like guerrilla marketing. You know, I have open houses at my house. I, I used to be a real estate agent, so I have these signs that say open house, and people just drive up to my house, and they come in the house because it's an open house, and they walk in, and I'm sitting there with a display of all my books. And they're like, so how much is the house? And I said, well, the house isn't for sale. I'm actually selling my books. And they're like, what do you mean? I said, I'm having an open house for my books. Would you like to buy one? And they're just like, one or two things happen. They just walk out like that was weird. Or they feel so guilty about being in the house. <laughs> they buy a book. It's kind of funny. So I do those things. I, I think it's just genius because who would actually think about one, inviting people to walk into your home right. and, you know, 
one of the things that's so great about looking at marketing in a different way is how are you having the impact be different for people, be looking outside of it from a different perspective. So utilizing an open house as a way to have people look at your book is, it's just brilliant. It's and just and so don't fun. you think, even if nothing happens from that meeting, right? Right. Don't you think that person, and yes is the answer, <laughs> is going to tell all their friends, I went to this open house and this guy was selling books. Right. He's going to tell his friends about this. And, and, and the great thing about my brand is, it's this rock star guy. I don't know, rock star used to tour with Guns N' Roses. So they'll right. Google it and then they'll find it. Right. And I've, al I've already told several people about it as well, just because it's so fun. And the other one is about what you do with stamps, especially with like 49 or 50 yeah. stamps. So when, I, when I, I teach people how to actually sell their books, not only write their books, but we want to actually, actually sell some. So, um, um, or have people review them. So if I want to get a podcaster or a YouTuber to review my book, because they have a lot of hits, I'll send, I'll put my book in a manila envelope and I'll send it. But instead of putting just a metered stamp or a 49 or it's not 49 cents, actually a $2 or something cent stamp, I put 201 cent stamps on the envelope. <laughs> so the person getting the book is, uh, getting the package is going to open it just out of curiosity. Right. Like, Who? had the time to do this or why, and right? why, because I got you to open it, you know? Oh, I, I love this so much. I mean, Craig has so many of these just totally outside of the box marketing ideas. And I'm going to ask you about another one here in a second, but I'd love for the people who are on Facebook, I'd love for you to put down in like in the comments, like either what is your favorite marketing ninja thing that Craig has shared <laughs> Or what are any questions that you have about marketing and thinking outside of the box, especially if things aren't working as well and you're not moving things and you want to do something different, you can do one of two things. You can either go to craigdeswalt.com and see some of the fun things he's got on there um, and share these with your friends and really pass these out there. Put your likes and, and just, you know, if you're on listening to this, go to the website, craigdeswalt.com and check these out. And then the second thing is, is start thinking about how you could do this differently. Differently. And with that, Craig, I would love for you to talk about <laughs> how do you get your book into a bookstore in a very interesting way? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, this I'm is my, doing this. Uh, yeah, right. I, this is, this is my uh, best one. I, I, I think it's like the one that I guess it started putting me on the map, I guess, 10 years ago. And I don't do drugs. I don't even drink. And I don't even know how I thought of this. It just, these ideas just came to me and I just wonder what would happen if I drank, uh, you know. <laughs> I know, me yeah. too, I don't drink either. It could be a crazy combination. <laughs> I know, right? So anyway, so you have to write a small book. So I tell people, I, I teach people how to write 96 page books. And there's a reason for 96 pages. It's less than hundred pages. So it's not overwhelming for you to write it. And it's less than hundred pages. So it's not overwhelming for the person to actually read it. Um, a book. Uh, business books should not be long. I think they should be short books. Get to the point. Tell me what I need to do so I can be successful. So I teach people to write these thinner books, 96 page books. So after you write the book, you take like 10 or 15 of those books and you put them in a backpack. And I prefer to go to my local bookstore, which is Barnes and Noble. And I walk around the bookstore and I go, hmm, where would my book look good in this? <laughs> and, uh, and then I go to the marketing section. And I kneel down and I take my books out of my backpack and I put them on the shelves and that's called reverse shoplifting. <laughs> <laughs> you actually, and you know, what's really funny. There are so many, so many seminars out there teaching you how like $2,000 go learn how to get books on bookshelves. I'm like, why is this so difficult? Just put it there yourself. You know? <laughs> I love the picture that you took. It was like, here's a series of your books and here's Tony Robbins. Yeah. And you I know, it was like, to Tony. <laughs> oh my God. It was and the interesting thing about that. I mean, I've done this all over and I have, <laughs> I have a lot of people doing this um, all over the country and they send me pictures, you know, it's really funny. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the interesting thing is people actually can buy that book. Now you won't get paid because you're not hooked up to it. But right. if you have an ISBN number and a barcode like we teach and how to make it a real book, it's still a real book. They right. scan it, you know, they, they, they scan it and it comes up in the system because I'm in the you know, database and it says on their screen sometimes it says, well, that's weird. We don't have any of those books. Where did you find it? And they say, no, no, I found it in marketing. And they take the money and sometimes 
they call me up and they say, hey, we've run out of your books, can you send more? <laughs> and, then, and then you're on their shelves that way, you know? It's really fun. So great, it's so <laughs> fun. And I love this, this is fun way that you approach marketing and looking at things and just, I mean, that's so in line with, you know, the spa life about just, you, you're having this accomplishment. I mean, you're selling books, you're doing the things, you're making things happen, but you're doing it in a fun, harmonious way. And that's how yeah. we want to live our life. That's really what we're looking at is being able to have that balance and to do things outside the box. So I love that you've encompassed this whole rock and roll, mon you know, marketing and doing it in such a, a, great different way so you know I, if you're gonna have if you're gonna be in business i always like my danger is when i talk i'm very entertaining i'm very funny and all that and sometimes people don't understand that there's a serious side to me i'm very serious about marketing and very serious about money but i also want to have fun doing it and so many people just don't look like they're having fun so i try to you know make it fun and i and i know for a fact that when you're at a seminar or learning or learning webinars and you're having fun while learning, you retain more too. So. Right. No, I love that so much. So speaking of fun, I know our podcast people aren't going to actually be able to see this, but our Facebook people will. I'd love to see, so you've got this guitar hanging on your wall back there. Tell me the story behind that. It's a Brett Michaels guitar that says rock on. I actually have guitars all over my room and my house. So every time I do a rock star boot camp now, um, whoever is on my stage, I get them to sign these guitars and uh, they sign them to me. So I have like uh, Mickey Dolans of the Monkees, Eddie Money, Duff McKagan of Guns N' Roses, Russell Hitchcock of Air Supply, Ray Parker Jr., Ghostbusters, John Waite from The Babies and that song Missing You, uh, uh, Fee Wable from The uh, Tubes. I don't know if you know The Tubes. Anyway, I have guitars all over the place. And I have this really cool thing here. I'll show you this. Okay. This is really cool. I don't know if you can see this. I, this is my Guns N' Roses double platinum album, uh, commemorating three million sales of each one, and it's presented to Craig Doeswell. Me. So oh, I, how fun! A double Guns N' Roses album, platinum album. Which oh, is I love that. That is so cool. You know, I. I I always talk about, you know, your physical space is, you know, you want it to inspire you and you don't yeah. want to have things in there that, you know, drag you down or can cause an anchor that allow you not to have the expansion that you want to have in your life. So mm -hmm. that leads me to want to ask a question I, I love to talk about because, you know, one of the things I, I help people with is looking at their physical space and, you know, does it inspire them? And is it the experience that they want to have? Because we want to have a different experience in our bedroom than we want to do in our kitchen and then in our family room, right? I mean- Necessarily. I'm Let, not necessarily. However, you no. know, <laughs> I might have talked to Natasha about that. No, 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 no. So, but when you think about your home, what is your favorite room and why? I'm sitting in it. And um, I, because I love what I do, I love what I do. I love being in my office. I'm, I'm, I'm at peace here. And my, my kids come in and visit. There's chairs for everybody in my office. And we have family time here because they know dad's working. Um, I also, though, just, um, we build out our garages. We never, ever park our cars in our garages here. Um, so in our garage is a three-car garage. Two of the cars is a game room for the kids. Two of the uh, driveway, the, two of the stalls are a big, gigantic game room for the kids. And right off of that is my TV studio that I just built. So I'm always in there with the kids and they're playing and I'm um, doing uh, Rock Your Life TV. So I have two favorite rooms, even though you could argue that the bedroom is my favorite room, but uh, this is where I am most of the time. I have a TV here. Like you just said, I've, I've set up my office for the place that makes me most comfortable. I can be creative. I'm inspired by all these musicians on, them, on my wall that have made it big. And I'm inspired that I earned a uh, triple platinum album, which is kind of cool. So, yeah. so fantastic. Well, I, I love that you've created a space that not only shows accomplishment, but in inspiration, because I mean, that's what you, the experience you want to have in your office. And so to yeah. have the things that actually bring that out of you to have that creative spirit and, and to have that happen is, is really amazing. So I know that our followers are going to want to connect with you and, you know, stay in touch with you. Let's talk a little bit here about how you're 
going across the country here with your rock your life world tour and mm -hmm. motivating inspiring people across the country uh tell us a little bit about that so um it's i'm a I, i'm a marketing guy i teach marketing rockstar marketing boot camps i have rockstar marketing i have a rockstar marketing mastermind with 150 members and i do personal coaching calls with them one-on-one -on -one coaching calls and it's if over the last 11 years that I've been doing this, 90 to 95% of my coaching calls have nothing to do with marketing. They want to ask me about how do you get this done? How do you do this? How do you find time to do this? How do you bring your family everywhere? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm a life coach. And I'm like, I, I didn't want to be a life coach. I want to be a marketing coach. But I found that that's what people see. They, they want to have what we, I guess, show by example, as a great family life because we do a lot of everything together. We do everything together. So, um, so I said to myself, I need to incorporate business and life, work and play. And so I started Rock Your Life is my new brand. And I'm doing Rock Your Life TV, which is my YouTube channel. So rockyourlifetv.com, rockyourlifepodcast.com on my podcasts. And then I'm doing Rock Your Life Nights. And my first one is November 4th at The Grove in Anaheim, California, where rock stars play this big venue, and I got to sell it out, which I'm stressing over. So <laughs> no November 4th is the day, tickets are 25 to 45 bucks, and it's just a night of inspiration, encouragement, motivation, and music. And it's just, uh, it's a faith-based um, seminar. We're not gonna, no, no Bible thumping or stuff like that, just uh, more of a spiritual, um, so it's fun for the whole family. Um, there's no cursing, there's no R to X-rated stories with Guns N' Roses. It's just <laughs> a night of inspiration, motivation, um, and music, and encouragement. And uh, so it's my new thing that I have such a passion for. Like I said, it launches November 4th in Anaheim, California, and then I'll be going to cities across the world. I'm going to like Dallas, New York, Chicago, Atlanta, Las Vegas, type things all over. And what, what's the link that people can get to uh, find out where you're going to be? Rockyourlifenight.com. And the, I've only launched the first date because I don't want people to go to the other ones yet. I want everyone to come to the first one. So right. it's rockyourlifenight.com. And the only date on there is November 4th. It's a Saturday night and at the Grove, City National Grove in Anna. Uh, so fun. Well, Craig, thank you so much for being on the show and really sharing uh, about how you are utilizing this balance because our listeners are going to want to hear this. In fact, if you guys want to hear more about this, please subscribe and you know, go to the you know, Live Your Spa Life show because we're really showcasing people who are having that accomplishment and harmony in their life because this is the things that people are asking us about. These are the things that will really bring more satisfaction to your life that what you're doing is, is a fun adventure. I mean, it's in, you know, as Craig's showing it, it's, it can be a rock and roll adventure to really do the things that you're, you're up to. So definitely check out Craig at craigdeswalt.com and also grab my free gift at dianehoffman.com forward slash guide. And Craig, thank you so much for your time and your wisdom and your just fun passion to what you bring. And thank you, Diane, for first of all, having me. And it was great hanging with you for 26 days at eWomen. <laughs> Absolutely. So much fun. I'm looking forward to us hanging out again soon. Absolutely. Have to have you guys at the next spa life retreat. Love it. All right. Until we talk again, live your spa life. Bye for now.